And uh, day to day, real life, there's lots of factors that will influence the need of omega 6s and omega 3s. If you have a liver problem, if you have an autoimmune disease, if you have a problem metabolizing fats, all of these are going to affect how much how, uh, the ratios or the appropriate ratio for you. If we're growing fast, kids, uh, if you're healing from surgery, you're going into surgery, you're exercising, you're building muscle, you probably need more omega 6s. If you're sitting down on your butt most of the day, or if you have a sedentary lifestyle, you're, you're sitting down on the job, you're not exercising, you probably need less omega 3, omega 6s than omega 3. So it's anywhere from 1 to 1 to 4 to 1 ratio higher if you have if you're healing or if you're exercising or you got some kind of ex, or if you're growing you're a kid uh, less the ratio will be less if uh, if you have a sedentary lifestyle or uh, if you're older and you're not necessarily building muscle if you're not getting enough antioxidants, you should probably be using less amounts of omega-6s. These fats are unstable and they're easily destroyed by oxidation. So if you're not eating your vegetables, you're not supplementing with your Mighty 90 nutrients, you probably don't want to take as uh, many omega-6s. You'll probably want a lower ratio of omega-6s to omega-3s. And also, sometimes essential fatty acids, your omega-6s and omega-3s, can be displaced by crappy fats, lousy fats, processed fats, hydrogenated fats, trans fats which is what a lot of us are eating. So the more of those kinds of fats, the more french fry fats, candy bar fats, chips, and, and uh, fried food fats that you're eating, the greater your need for essential fatty acids is going to be, both omega-6s and omega-3s. And you're going to need more omega-6s if you're not converting your omega-6s into GLA. Remember, GLA, super mega, mega important form of omega-6s, needs to be converted or manufactured from your food oils. So you eat your food oils, you take your ultimate EFA supplements, your body has to be able to convert those omega-6s into GLAs, and not everybody can do that, especially if you're diabetic or especially if you're pre-diabetic or especially if you have dysglycemia, messed up blood sugar, it's going to be difficult for you to make your own GLA. It's going to be difficult for you to convert your omega-6s into GLAs, which means a couple of things. If you're diabetic or pre-diabetic or blood sugar problems, or if you're eating a lot of bad, crappy fats, you need more omega-6 fats, and it's probably a good idea to supplement with barrage oil like you get in the Ultimate EFA and EFA Pluses just to make sure that you're getting this uber, super, crazy important form of omega-6s called GLA. So if you're diabetic, blood sugar problems, dysglycemia, messed up blood sugar, you're probably not going to be converting your omega-6 fats into GLA as effectively. That means more omega-6s are probably required. That means more ultimate EFAs and more ultimate essential fatty acid plus capsules if you're diabetic. I tell everybody, take I, I recommend three capsules three times a day, but if you've got blood sugar problems or, or diabetes or if you're eating a lot of lousy fats, you probably want to take more rather than less of your ultimate EFAs or ultimate EFA pluses. So nobody really knows exactly how much you need in terms of EFAs on a daily basis or in terms of the balance of omega-6s to omega-3s, but the more lousy fat you get, uh, the more lousy fat you're eating, the more uh, health conditions or health challenges you have or the more diabetes you have, uh, the more essential fatty acids total you're going to need and the more omega-6s compared to omega-3s you're going to need as well. Okay, I'm Pharmacist Ben. We're coming back with your phone calls. 855-660-4261 is our number. You're listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network. Okay, welcome back to The Bright Side. I am Pharmacist Ben. Thanks for joining us. Our number is 855-660-4261. And we do have a couple lines open for you. We'll get your calls here in just a sec. Uh, so hang tight. We'll get you in just a sec. I want to sum up... Uh, some of this, uh, some of this idea of omega sixes and omega threes, and we'll just finish up a type of few loose ends tomorrow, and then we'll talk about our next really important signaling hormone molecule, one that comes from uh, nitrogen. A little clue for you there, and one that's related to the amino acid that we've been talking about for the last couple of weeks. Uh, maybe a month or so, and that's arginine. We'll talk about that tomorrow. I just want to uh, just wind this thing down here on prostaglandins and essential fatty acids. You've got two kinds of essential fatty acids. You've got omega-6s, which are said to be pro-inflammatory, not in a bad way, although excessive amounts of omega-6s can be uh, 
can theoretically cause too much inflammation. They're supposed to be balanced with omega-3 fats, which are related to anti-inflammation and anti-inflammatory prostaglandins, with the exception of GLA, which is omega-6 and has wonderful anti-inflammatory properties, especially for the skin. You can use GLA topically right on the skin. You can G use GLA internally as a supplement. If you take your ultimate EFAs, you're going to get GLA uh, in the barrage oil. That's what uh, that's one of Dr. Wallach's uh, one of more clever moves in formulating the longevity products is using barrage oil in the Ultimate EFA Pluses. Uh, you get 19 milligrams of GLA in the Ultimate EFA Plus for all inflammatory issues, you guys, and for all autoimmune issues and for all building issues. You want to focus on fats, especially your Ultimate Essential Fatty Acid Capsules. If you have problems absorbing fats, then you're going to want to make extra sure that you're using your Ultimate Enzymes, lecithin, bile salts with your ultimate EFAs to make sure you're absorbing these ultimate essential fatty acids. And then uh, tomorrow we'll just wind down and tell you about a couple more, a couple other nutrients that are associated with prostaglandins that help your prostaglandins work better, especially if you have autoimmune disease. There's a major, major connection between prostaglandins and autoimmune disease, which means essential fatty acids and autoimmune disease. And uh, we'll, we'll finish that up tomorrow on the bright side. Okay, time to hit our phones, 855-660-4261. Welcome to the bright side. Anne in Pennsylvania, what's going on? Um, hi, Ben. Uh, I just wondered, what do you recommend for uh, menopausal symptoms? Uh, lots of things for menopausal symptoms. Most importantly, it's going to be your fats and fatty vitamins. When women get older, when we all get older, but especially after menopause, pause uh, with women, fat absorption tends to be compromised, problems absorbing fats. So the first thing to think about for women who are going through uh, going through menopause, perimenopause, premenopause, or menopause, or postmenopause, is using your ultimate essential fatty acids, all your fats really, uh, ultimate essential fatty acids with enzymes, because you got to make sure you're absorbing these things. And then as I've said a lot of times in this program, but it bears repeating, there's a major connection between probiotics and fat absorption and fat metabolism, especially when it comes comes to fatty hormones like estrogen. So everybody needs probiotics, but especially post-menopause or perimenopause or during menopause, uh, bioluminite essence, fermented foods, uh, anything you could do to support bacterial growth, bacterial balance in the intestine is going to be in your interest. So fats, ultimate EFAs, probiotics, as well as fat metabolizing nutrients like digestive enzymes and uh, bile salts, apple cider vinegar, lecithin, etc. cetera. Uh, also, fatty vitamins are very important. In fact, vitamins E and A are a woman's, uh, me a menopausal woman's best vitamin friends, vitamin E and A, and their associated minerals, magnesium, selenium, calcium, and zinc. These are associated with fatty vitamins. So fatty vitamins as well as minerals, vitamins E and A particularly. Also vitamin K, a uh, somewhat underappreciated fatty vitamin, is important for helping build strong bones and helping uh, important for helping the body and cells utilize calcium. And vitamin K deficiencies are somewhat common. So vitamin K is also important, making sure you're out in the sun to get your vitamin D, really important. And then one of the most underappreciated, in my opinion, one of the most underappreciated strategies for keeping menopausal, postmenopausal women uh, healthy is stabilizing blood sugar, keeping your blood sugar stable, using blood sugar stabilizing techniques like eating more protein, eating more good fat, especially coconut oil and butter, and reducing your intake of fast-burning insulin spiking foods. Hot flashes are like a, the body's cry for uh, st uh, blood sugar stabilization. Hot flashes are almost a, 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 an exact symptom of what occurs in the body when blood sugar is off. So, uh, and menopausal symptoms, uh, uh, hot flashes, night sweats, anxiety, those kinds of things. Stabilizing the blood sugar is very important. Uh, that means the sweeties, the beyond tangy tangerine, as well as making sure you're getting more fat, more protein, and less insulin spiking foods. Those are the two areas that I would be focusing on. Uh, fatty, uh, uh, fatty vitamins, essential fat fatty acids and uh minerals that are associated with fats, and then stabilizing the blood sugar. If you want a couple other things, use some pregnenolone or progesterone cream. Both of those have a balancing effect on estrogen, pregnenolone and progesterone cream. Uh, after menopause, progesterone tends to progesterone levels tend to drop really fast. Estrogen, you're always making a little bit of estrogen. As long as you have body fat, you're always making a little bit of estrogen, but uh, progesterone, that drops like a stone. Uh, and progesterone has a nice relaxing effect on the body, while estrogen has a kind of 
jittery effect on the body. So using progesterone or pregnenolone capsules, 100 milligrams or so can be helpful. Uh, making sure that you're getting, making sure that you're getting adequate rest, adequate sleep, deep breathing techniques, those are also going to be very important as well. Lots of other things you could do too. There's herbs that you can use. Don Kwai is a nice herb. Vitex is a good herb. Red clover is a good herb for helping improve menopausal symptoms too. But I'd be focusing on fats, fatty vitamins, minerals that are associated with those fatty vitamins, and then blood sugar stabilization or blood sugar control. And okay? what about what, what about um, bioidentical hormones? I am telling you, I don't buy into that. I do that not right? buy. Yeah, I'll tell you why. First of all, bioidentical. If anybody says bioidentical to you, they either don't know what they're talking about or they're trying to sell you something because there's no such thing as bioidentical. You can't be bioidentical. What they call bioidentical is three hormones that are the primary hormones in the body, uh, primary estrogens in the body. But that's not bioidentical. That's just the three most important estrogens in the body. And there's many estrogens. We call, call estrogen, uh, we refer to a hormone called estrogen, but really estrogen is a family of hormones. And the three main ones are called estrone, estradiol, and estriol. And so when they say bioidentical, they mean they give you all three, as opposed to just giving you uh, estradiol or as opposed to giving you a, a premarin or a fake estrogen. They give you these three main ones. But that doesn't mean it's bioidentical. That just means it's the three main ones. You see what I'm saying? Bioidentical uh -huh, yeah. implies like you're getting the exact same thing that your body uses. Horse hockey. That's marketing. And there should be no place for marketing in healthcare, in my opinion, especially when it comes to drugs and comes to medication. So I don't know, I, it really kind of ticks me off a little bit when we talk about bioidentical hormones. Now, when you take your estrogen, because estrogen is kind of like a, a stress management hormone, you may feel better in the short run. But get your package insert out. That is the, the little uh, a side effect profile that they give you with, with uh, all drugs. And read the side effects and adverse reactions associated with so-called bioidentical estrogen. You'll see things like blood clots and heart attacks and uh, a cancer, breast cancer particularly, cysts and growths and fibroids, all associated with so-called bioidentical hormones. So I'm not a big believer in them. I'm not a woman, so obviously I'm not going to be taking them. And it's, you have to make your own decision. But in my humble opinion, go with the fats, go with the fatty vitamins, uh, and by fats, I mean essential fatty acids. Go with the fatty vitamins, your fatty minerals. Use some progesterone or pregnenolone, and then make sure you're stabilizing the blood sugar, and you'll be a lot better off, my opinion. Okay, if you are going to use the bioidentical hormones, make sure you're balancing it with progesterone. Progesterone cream can help balance out and mitigate some of the uh, negative effects, some of the adverse effects associated with bioidentical hormones. Pregnenolone can do the same thing or, or similar, similar uh, to progesterone. Okay, got to move on. Thank you for your call, Ann. Appreciate it. God bless. Have a beautiful day. If you're on hold, hang tight. We'll get to you when we come back from our break. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network. On the bright side, I'm pharmacist Ben Sherry in Arizona. What's cooking? Welcome to the bright side. Hi, Doctor Ben. How you doing? I'm doing great. Not a doctor though, just a plain old pharmacist, little old pharmacist. I know, but you're you're great. You're close enough. That's uh, you're better you. than any other ones I've ever met. Thank you. I appreciate uh, it. What's going on? Listen, my friend. My husband has Crohn's, and okay. I just fed, and he's on prednisone and has been. And it's helping him a lot, probably. It's cured his Crohn's disease, right? No? Well, we only wish that would be really? a cure. Really? Oh, so, but so yes, but? Our problem is now is uh, because he's not getting any better. I mean, mm. we, we've got him upright and the swelling's down. And we only have him on 10 milligrams of prednisone where we used to have him on 60. Uh, 60 we, we milligrams. On, That's huge. That's a huge it dose. It is huge. It is huge, my friend. Okay. And it causes a lot of problems inside the body, which we're, mm -hmm. we're fighting those as well. I listen to you every day, and I get a lot of really good advice about uh, the GI tract. However, okay. yes. I just found out yesterday that prednisone is wiping out his intestinal flora. Isn't that intelligent? Isn't that isn't that an intelligent medical strategy that doctors it use? It really pisses me off. Of course it does. To be pisses, you should have your own show then, because it pisses me off too, and that's why I do this. Yeah. It really yeah. ticks me off. How yeah. dare a boneheaded? Uh, they give you prednisone for your Crohn's disease, which destroys your your digestive system, which is what Crohn's disease does. This is the right. the, the numbskull nature of our modern medical model. All right, I don't want to get all freaked out here, so let's just cut to the chase. I know. I've heard you many times uh, talk about it. And it's, it's absurd. Care to, and I do my own fermenting. I do all his own cooking. We okay. don't. He doesn't eat anything unless I give it to him 
uh, from what I make with my research and all, of course, you and Dr. Wolex help. Okay. Now, um, you want me to help I, you out here? Let me, let me just cut I to the chase here. I absolutely you. need your help, my all friend. Right. Crohn's disease is an eating disease. It's a, it's a, yes. affects, it's just a digestive tract issue. Now, he's probably, I'm assuming your husband's probably, probably in his fifties or sixties at this point, correct? My husband's 48 years old. Okay. So he's got some time, he's got the decades of, of kind of messing up the digestive tract and there's going to be some, it's going to take some time to turn this thing around completely, but he can begin to turn it around right away. First right. and foremost,